Today we're going to be making a little bit of denatonium benzoate, which is a super bitter compound. One of the common brand names of it is Bitrex, and it's basically just used to make things bitter. So it's commonly included in various chemicals and alcohols that you really shouldn't be drinking, like methanol or paint thinner. It also has some niche uses, like in special nail polish to prevent nail biting. I want to make it because I think it's kind of a cool compound, and I think it's interesting just how bitter it is. Just to give you an idea of how bitter it is, I got a little bit on my fingers and for more than two days I couldn't eat any food with my hands. The craziest thing that really shows how potent it is was when I played cards one day, my friend started tasting a bitter taste in his mouth because the bitterness transferred from my fingers to the cards to his fingers and then to his mouth. And mind you, this is after a few days of washing my hands thoroughly trying to get rid of this bitterness. Anyway, we're going to be making denatonium benzoate from three things that we got from previous videos. Benzoic acid, lidocaine, and benzyl chloride. So I tried to lay out everything that we used here, but as usual, I forgot a couple things. I used 2.5 grams of lidocaine, 1.76 grams of benzyl chloride, about 10 milliliters of toluene, 1 gram of sodium hydroxide, 1 gram of benzoic acid, and a copious amount of acetone. To start off, I added 2.5 grams of lidocaine to a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. On top of this, I poured in about 6 milliliters of distilled water. I then set up an oil bath with a cold water condenser on top and with a thermometer in the oil. I turn on the hot plate and I start the stirring as well. The cold water condenser above should recondense any water that evaporates off. The goal here is to heat the mixture to about 80 degrees Celsius. Once we're around 80 C, the condenser is taken off and I add 1.76 grams of benzyl chloride. Once the benzyl chloride has been added, the condenser column is replaced back on top of the flask. If we take a closer look at the reaction, it actually kind of looks pretty cool. These little small globs of liquid are actually melted lidocaine. As the lidocaine reacts with the benzyl chloride, the globs should slowly disappear. To increase the efficiency of the reaction, I turn the stirring on really fast to break up all the small globs. What we do now is we leave the reaction heated and stirring at 80 C for about 24 hours. So what we're doing in this reaction is we're reacting lidocaine with benzyl chloride to make denatonium chloride. If you look at the nitrogen of the lidocaine, it's tertiary because it has three substituents, but if you look at the nitrogen of the product, it's quaternary because it has four substituents. Also, the lidocaine that we're reacting is free base, meaning there's no positive charge on the nitrogen and no counter ion, but the product that we're producing is a salt. The nitrogen is charged and it has the chloride counter ion. The general name for this type of reaction, where a tertiary amine is reacted with a halogenated alkane to produce a quaternary ammonium salt, is called a Menschutkin reaction. The type of reaction that this is, is a nucleophilic aliphatic substitution. Chlorine is a lot more electronegative than carbon, which means it has a stronger pull on the electrons that they share. Because of this, the electrons aren't shared super evenly, and they actually lie closer to chlorine. Because of the decreased influence of the negative charge of the electrons, the carbon takes on a very slight positive charge. The nitrogen of the lidocaine is what's known as nucleophilic. In more simple terms, the nitrogen effectively just has a free lone pair of electrons that it really wants to donate to something. In our case, the perfect thing that it can donate to and form a bond with is the benzyl chloride because of that partial positive charge that I mentioned earlier. So that's what happens. The nitrogen is nucleophilic and it searches out this partial positive charge of the benzyl chloride and it attacks it and forms a bond. At some point though, the chlorine is popped off and it serves to act as the counter ion for the positive nitrogen. The reason why this type of reaction is called the substitution is because we substituted the chlorine with something else. The actual in-depth mechanism of this reaction can be a little tricky because it might take two different routes. It's possible that it can do what's known as SN1 or SN2, but I don't really want to get into the details of this. I actually already talked about SN1 and SN2 in the video where I made the benzyl chloride, so if you're interested in this, you can check out that video. I'll try to remember to provide a link to that in the description, but honestly I'll probably forget. 
When we come back to the reaction the next day, we can see that it's actually pretty clear. I look at the thermometer and it actually stayed pretty close to 80 the whole time, so I was pretty happy with this. So now that it's been 24 hours, the reaction is done and I can turn off stirring and take apart the apparatus. The first thing I do though is I take away the oil bath and I let the reaction mixture sit and cool to room temperature. Once it is cooled down, I add in about 5 milliliters of toluene. I then turned on very fast stirring to get a good mixture going. I then turned off the stirring and let the layer settle and using a pipette, I tried to pull off the toluene. For this step, it's honestly probably better to use a separatory funnel, but I decided not to for some reason. The purpose of this step is to wash out any unreacted starting materials. Both the lidocaine and the benzyl chloride are soluble in toluene, but our product is a salt, and it's not very soluble. Once I've pipetted out as much toluene as I could, I add in another 5 milliliters. Then just like before, I let the layer settle, but instead of pipetting out the toluene layer, I pipette out the water layer. The water layer is what contains our product, so we want to get out as much as possible, but not include any of the toluene. The toluene layer in the round bottom flask was still a little bit cloudy, so I decided to wash it with a bit of water. After mixing it and letting the layer settle, the water was also transferred to the beaker. So now to our denatonium chloride is added about 1 milliliter of 50% sodium hydroxide. I added the sodium hydroxide solution in two portions of about half a mil each time. This can be made really easily by adding about 1 gram of sodium hydroxide to about 1 milliliter of water. It might be hard to see, but a little bit of white solid precipitated out. This white solid should be denatonium hydroxide. To the mixture, I then added in about 20 milliliters of distilled water. If we look at the bottom, there's a bunch of goo, which is the denatonium hydroxide mixed with some toluene. To get rid of the toluene, we're going to have to boil away a little bit of the water. The small amount of toluene that's present should boil away with some of the water. Slowly after heating it, we can actually see some solid forming at the top. As we continue to heat and stir it, there were a lot of white globs floating around. However, as we continued, the amount seemed to decrease and they seemed to be solidifying. Eventually, it seemed like most of the globs were gone, and when I stopped stirring, we were left with a lot of white solid at the top. The denatonium hydroxide at the top was actually quite thick and solid, and it was enough to keep all of the water inside. Anyway, using a spatula, I break it apart, and then I have to vacuum filter it. So it's added to a filter flask, and then I pull a vacuum on it to get rid of the water. Once all the water was removed, a little bit more water was added to wash it. I then use a spatula to mix it up a little bit and try to get it as clean as possible. The vacuum's turned on and the water's removed, and I leave it on for a bit to try to dry things up. Once it got relatively dry, it was still a little pasty, and it was transferred to a beaker. So here we have the denatonium hydroxide we made on the left, and some benzoic acid on the right. To each beaker, I start by adding a little bit of acetone. I add a little bit more acetone to each, and almost all of the benzoic acid has dissolved, but there's a lot of undissolved denatonium hydroxide left over. I'm going to be honest and say that I thought all of the denatonium hydroxide was supposed to dissolve, so I put it back on my stir plate and added a lot more acetone. Even after adding a lot of acetone, it hadn't dissolved, and that's when I realized that it wasn't supposed to. With strong stirring, I added the benzoic acid to the denatonium hydroxide. A little bit of acetone was used to wash out any benzoic acid that might have remained in the beaker. What's interesting is that after it's added, it slowly starts to clear up. It doesn't clear up fully though, and it peaks out, and then eventually starts to get cloudy again. The reaction that we're doing here is an acid-base reaction, where the denatonium hydroxide is reacting with the benzoic acid to form denatonium benzoate and water. We needed to use denatonium hydroxide for this reaction because denatonium chloride would have formed hydrochloric acid instead of water. Hydrochloric acid is a stronger acid than benzoic acid, so the reaction wouldn't work because we can't make a stronger acid using a weaker one. Anyway, to make sure that everything's fully reacted, I let it stir for about 2 hours. Afterwards, I put up the heat a little bit and I evaporated all of the acetone. After all of the acetone was gone, I was left with a syrup. This is just super concentrated denatonium benzoate with a small amount of solvent left over, and for some reason it's not crystallizing. 
I tried adding seed crystals and putting it in the freezer, but it was really, really stubborn for some reason. Oddly enough, the only thing that worked was adding more acetone and re-evaporating it. I added roughly an equal volume of acetone, I turned up the heat, and I let it evaporate slowly. What's interesting here is I'm not heating it at all, but it fully dissolves to a clear solution. You'll understand why I thought this was a little bit weird in a few minutes. So after evaporating it this time, I was left with a very thick white goo. To this goo, I added again a little bit more acetone. Using a spatula, I tried to mix things up, but you can see it's pretty messy and nothing's really crystallizing. At this point, I was honestly kind of confused about what was happening because the dentonium benzoate's not supposed to be very soluble in acetone. The weird part is that before when we added the acetone, it was able to dissolve everything, but now it's really not dissolving much. Anyway, I kept adding acetone and mixing it around, and this time I was left with a murky solution. When I got rid of the acetone, I was left with mostly solid stuff. At this point, I think it's important to tell you guys just how unenjoyably bitter the denatonium benzoate is. During these steps where the acetone was evaporated, enough denatonium benzoate gets into the air to make your mouth unpleasantly bitter. The small amount that travels out of the beaker when the acetone's evaporated will actually settle on your face, and if you lick your lips, your mouth will become really bitter. Even if you wash your face repeatedly, the bitter taste is going to be there for a few days. I then set up a vacuum filtration to isolate my denatonium benzoate. I also used a little bit of acetone to wash out the beaker. The denatonium benzoate at this point is still really gooey, so I use a spatula to mix it around and wash it in the acetone. After mixing it around a lot, I pull away the acetone and try to dry up the denatonium benzoate as much as possible. Using a spatula, I scrape off as much as I can from the filter. I then transferred it to a small piece of paper to let it dry. Once it was dry, I used the spatula to crush it up and powderize it a little. I then transferred it to a dram vial, capped it, and labeled it accordingly as denatonium benzoate. The final yield was about 0.6 grams, which is actually really bad. In the end though, the denatonium benzoate is so potent that it doesn't really matter that the yield is so low. I don't really have a test to show you guys, but just believe me when I say that a very small amount of denatonium benzoate is very unpleasant. Again, here's a list of the videos that I'm currently editing and future videos I plan to film. In the videos being edited category, you can vote for the one that you want me to publish next, and in the future video category, you can vote for the one that you want me to film next. Also, if you're feeling generous, please donate to my Patreon account, because with a bigger budget per video, I can do more things. On my Patreon, I also added a milestone, and if we get to $250 per video, I'll commit to doing videos for at least six months.